All right, so today's work, we're going to start to look at uh, a, jo a couple of JavaScript libraries. So a library in JavaScript is basically a way to do things quickly. Let's say, just to pick some numbers, there are 200 JavaScript commands that you can learn. And you have to write them in a certain way, certain syntax, etc. So you have a library such as jQuery and others that let you write less code and accomplish more things. So we're going to start to look at uh, the jQuery library and another one called jQuery mobile. So jQuery basically is a way, their motto is write less, do more. So we're going to write less JavaScript to be able to do more. We will see that we've used the document.getElementById Right? We had that object and that method. In jQuery, we'll see that that's condensed down to a dollar symbol. That dollar symbol basically means document.getElementById, all simplified to a dollar symbol. So many libraries are about that, writing sort of shortcuts to make all of this go quickly. So uh, we're going to look at that. We're also going to look at jQuery mobile which is a way for us to quickly start to uh, create... Uh, actually, can we get one of these going over here? Sure. So we're going to then also look at jQuery mobile, which is a way for us to create mobile-friendly projects quickly. Um, this is when we talk about uh, responsive web design, uh, adaptive web design, and all of that. How do you create a project that looks good uh, on a tablet? a big tablet, a medium tablet, a phone, a small phone, a big phone, a big monitor, laptop, that's going to be via jQuery mobile, one possible way. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to start over with a quick blank document again, and we're not going to do that every single class time, but it's useful to start with something empty so that we can build on it easiest. So go ahead and open up your Notepad++ again save it as an HTML file on your flash drive. I'll just put today's date. So file save as to your flash drive. Today's date. Make sure it's .html or from the list there, hypertext markup language. Today's 0912. Then we're going to create those uh, basic 10 lines of code that define a super simple basic HTML project. A shortcut here, of course, is if you have created this, these simple 10 lines, you will be able to simply reuse it. Right? If you've got these lines here, just copy and paste it over and over to save you some effort. Or what you could do is, you know, be able to type it really fast and impress everyone, or not. But, um, you know, we need something very simple like this. We'll call this jQuery mobile. Uh, nothing in the actual body just yet, but those 10 lines. Go ahead and create that. Doc type, HTML main block, head block, body block meta tag, defining our character set, and a title for the project. Once we're done with that, we will do something new. We've seen this a few times. This should not be new. And if you've been looking at that book that I recommend, those books that I recommend, it's in those books as well. Um, I think I gave some unofficial homework over, this, over the weekend. I forgot what it was, but what was it? Did I? Um, yeah, the Mozilla, the Mozilla Developers website. So, uh, how many of you did check out the Mozilla Developers website over the weekend? Okay, great. Ten points for you, minus ten for everyone else. <laughs> you want to check that those resources out, um, especially if you're a beginner to all of this. It really helps to read as much as possible, and even if you are intermediate or advanced, if you refresh yourself once in a while, that's good. And you'll probably even see newer ways of of things being done. So go ahead and create those 10 lines or so, and we'll continue. Did everyone get a chance to sign in on that sign-in sheet?
All right, so this here is our basic HTML project. And um, what we're going to do is upgrade this in a few ways. Uh, this is going to be a mobile-friendly project. So we have this block, the head block, which is meta content. Content that is not visible to the main user in the, in the viewport area. The user doesn't see or know what this meta tag is, but it's, this is about our character set. The user might see the title up on the tab, but all of the stuff in the meta block usually is about setting up content that is beyond the scope of the main body. So we're going to add another meta tag here. This is one that will set ourselves up to create a mobile-friendly project. Line 6. Um, this is a uh, meta tag. M -E -T -A. It does not have a pair, but it has a few attributes like we've seen before. This one sets up our, the amount of the, the set of characters and alphabets we can use. This new meta tag concerns itself with an attribute of name and then an attribute of content. We're going to deal with an aspect of the website which is name, and how are we affecting the website, which is content. Name is going to be viewport, one word, lowercase, and then content is going to be initial-scale equals one. Have you ever been to a website on your mobile device, and the text was tiny, and you had to zoom in just to even see it? That means most likely that that website was not mobile friendly. It was not set up in a way that would look nice on a mobile device. It was set up for a nice big monitor. So this meta tag is to initialize ourselves to look nice, your project to look nice on a mobile device. The viewport is the main visible area. So we're saying let's affect the viewport. Let's set the initial scale, the initial zoom to one to 100%. It's the number one. 100%. Automatically zoom us in 100% initial scale. Comma, space, user dash scalable, scalable equals no. So eventually this is going to be a project that is a real app that a, that a person downloads. Do you ever use a real app like Facebook or Instagram or whatever? You can zoom in and out. Do you ever? Are you able to zoom in to the Facebook logo? Are you able to zoom in to see the corner of the Instagram app? No, you may be able to zoom in to a picture and such, but the actual interface, you can't zoom in and out of the interface by default on these apps. That's what we're saying here. Don't allow the user to scale it. Don't allow the user to zoom in and out. That'll break the illusion that this is a real app. It starts off as a website and eventually it will be a real app for the real app stores. So we're saying don't let it zoom in or zoom out. The, the user, zoom in or zoom out. We've got another one here. With, as in width and height, with equal to device dash width. So zoom the <coughs> <clears throat> the font and all of that to 100%, don't let the person zoom in and out, and then zoom in the rest of the interface to, to as much that it fills up the, the width of the device. So if your project is loaded up on a mobile device vertically, it stretches out to fill it like that. If a person goes landscape, it'll f stretch out to fill landscape. If it's on a tablet, etc. So this is setting up a mobile-friendly viewport. And that's the comment we can add right above, mobile-friendly viewport. Mobile-friendly viewport settings. And you can write the notes uh, about what I said that those mean. The initial zoom, uh, how, you know, what magnification of zoom it is. Yes, you can put other values like 0 0.75, but it's very uncommon to put anything besides one. Are you letting the person zoom in and out? No. And are you stretching the screen out to, this, to the monitor size? Question? 
No, because actually we only really need to put the width because it will automatically scale in proportion the height. The other dimension that we didn't say, it should stretch out just fine to fill it out. We don't have to put both. So that's our mobile-friendly viewport settings. Um, we're then going to reference, we're going to start to reference our, our libraries. These libraries are basically files that contain definitions. These are files that contain um, the definitions of the shorthand that we're dealing with. So next line, we're still in the head block. This is going to be a link tag. So li this kind of link is very different than the link that we might have in the viewport. In the viewport, in the body, we had, for example, click here to go to my website. Well, that A tag, that hyperlink, is different than this one. This one is about basically linking to a library, a file. So this has an attribute, rel, and another attribute of href. And the syntax again is whatever the name of the attribute equals quotes some value or values. So we're going to link our file to another file. Um, the rel is the relationship. It's a style sheet. We played with style sheets a little bit on the first day, which is a way to style your design, the colors, the fonts, etc. We're going to link to a style sheet file that has definitions of a bunch of designs. And we're going to link to the copy of this file <coughs> from the server. We're going to connect to the jQuery mobile website and connect to the jQuery mobile file on their server, and we're going to use it in our project. I'll mention the pros and cons of that in a moment. But we need to type a really big address here, http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash slash um, mobile slash one dot four dot five slash jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot CSS. Really big address and uh, the pros and cons of doing this is a pro is I don't need to then go out of my way to go copy, the, to go download the file. I can just connect to it on the server. A con is, a negative is, well, if their server doesn't work, my project doesn't work. So for the moment, we will, we will connect to their online version and later we'll download it and have it locally. The other downside is you have to type that exactly correct. You have to put the right dots and dashes and everything. So to repeat this, http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash mobile dot one dot four dot five slash jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot CSS. You said, you said dot, mobile dot, it's actually mobile slash, right? Mobile slash 1.4.5. Yeah. So we're connecting over to the jQuery server in the mobile directory, subdirectory 145, the version of the library. There's other versions, 1.3.2, for example, and then finally the file. Now, a lot of times nowadays you also see a file here that's got two extensions. Oftentimes you just see one, .html, .doc, .txt. This one's got two because this is uh, basically marking that this is a minified version of the file. This one has been stripped out of all of the empty spaces and the tabs and the comments and all of that. It's very hard for regular people to read but it's been minified and optimized for 
the computer to process. So if you were to follow that link in your web browser, you would see all that raw code and it would be hard to read. But it's just fine for the computer to process. So this line is our project connecting to the jQuery mobile CSS library. This will give us access to a variety of things. Certain fonts and colors and styles and animations and things. This is the point of the library. Shortcuts. Instead of writing a really long command in JavaScript, I can write a relatively shorter one. Next, we need to connect to two JavaScript libraries, and these are going to go here before the end of body. Well, before that, let's write the little comment there. Connection to... Connection to jQuery mobile CSS library. To know exactly how it works and what you get from it, obviously we would visit jQuery.com and such, which we'll do later. But um, right here, this is basically to connect to that style sheet file online on the server. Again, if you uh, don't have a connection to the internet at the moment, then this is detrimental to your project. Later on, we'll download the file and have it locally in our project folder so that we're not reliant on, a, on an internet connection. Next, I'll write here the comment before I forget. Connections to uh, jQuery and jQuery mobile JavaScript libraries. And these two will also be some big um, addresses. Syntax is a little different. When we did a little bit of JavaScript last time, we created the script block. And we need that again also, but instead of us writing all of our lines of code in the script block, we're going to use the script tag to connect to the JavaScript file. So we, we won't write anything. You know, last time we had these script tags and we wrote our JavaScript. We don't want anything in between these script tags. I'm going to also keep them on one line just to save a few bytes. We don't want to write anything in between those script tags. We want to use the script tag uh, as a connection to the JavaScript file. Notice the syntax is different. In link, it uses an href. That's how you connect to the CSS file. But in JavaScript, you use source kind of like an image, this is like an A tag for a link. Here we're going to connect to a similar type of address, http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com, but then this time simply jQuery dash two dot two dot four dot min dot js. So this is connecting to the jQuery version 2.2.4 minified JS file. This is going to give us access then to the jQuery shortcuts so we can write less and do more. We need one more. On this one you can copy and paste the link that you had up here but just change the extension from a .css to .js. So if you type this top one correctly, you can reuse it by copying and pasting. So I'm going to copy that link at the top and paste it, but you have to change .css to .js. To test if this works, uh, you can just create a very quick h1 hello world and run it in the browser. I'll show you how it should look to confirm it in a moment. Actually, let me just confirm mine works and then I will show you the code again one moment. OK. 
Okay, mine works. So um, it's a really long line of code, but you just want to double and triple check your spelling. If it does work, you should get something where it looks like this, which is different than this. If your background still looks white and your text, your font looks like Times New Roman, something went wrong. Uh, if it worked properly, it should look like this. See that? If it doesn't work, it'll look like that. If it does work, it'll look like that. The font is not a pure black font. It's like slightly grayish. It's also Arial. The background is a bit of a grayish color. That's white. That's gray. So if it worked, it should look something like that. If it didn't, it looks something like that. Let me pause here. This we need to we need for this to obviously work before we go on. Double check your spelling. If you're having any trouble, call me over, but we need that to work. So the point of these three files is to connect to two libraries, jQuery, which gives us the ability to write a lot of JavaScript shortcuts in general. Then jQuery Mobile, which is more focused on creating a mobile-friendly project. And there are many other libraries out there, Angular, Ionic, uh, Onsen, etc. There's a JavaScript library every month. And uh, all of these libraries have different purposes jQuery is one of the most popular ones. It's been around a while, probably like 10 years by now or more, and it's a way for you to write a lot of uh, shortcuts in your code. So anyone having any trouble? Ready to go?
All right, so the uh, connection to these libraries then gives us the ability to do much more, especially quickly. So what we're going to do here, uh, I just wanted to put that hello world there temporarily. This is one quick way to check that it, that it works. If it's not working, mm -hmm. your font will look plain like times. If it is working, it'll look like Arial. So we don't really need that text there, that H1 thing. Just delete that. That was one quick way to check if it works. Okay, so the way um, the way uh, the the way jQuery Mobile helps us is it lets us create what is known as an SPA, a single page app. This is a a way of creating an app in which in one file we create multiple screens. So single page app. Uh, we could create an app where we have you know a home. .html file and it links to an about.html file and it links to a catalog.html file, separate files. Or, the way we're going to see here, we can have the home, that about, and that catalog all in one file so that it's a little bit easier to manage. The way we're going to then separate the screens is by using the right attributes of, these, of this code. So we're going to use a tag called section. This is an HTML5 valid tag, section. Um, very, very simply here, then we'll write um, h1 uh, first page. Whatever's in this section will be the first page, or let's say the first screen, the first screen of our app. Our app is going to have multiple screens or pages, SPA, single page app. Create another section. And here you can also write H1, second screen. My idea here is we're going to have a section full of all of the stuff of the home screen of our app. Eventually, very quickly, we're going to create in this class a login, logout system. This comic book database that I mentioned that we're going to strive toward, this is an inventory tracking system. And in that comic book app we're going to create, we're going to have the ability for people to, different people, to manage their collection on the same device. So we'll have a login logout, meaning eventually we're going to have a login screen. We're going to have a logout screen. We're going to have different screens, and different screens are delineated via section. So if you save this and run it, you'll be disappointed <coughs> because we're not quite there yet. Section does separate the content from screen to screen when we add a couple more attributes. 
it doesn't quite know. Okay, this is supposed to be completely separate from this, and this is supposed to be invisible until I choose to go from here to here. So it shows it both. Because the section tag is just a plain old HTML5 tag, which doesn't have the meaning yet of separate this screen, hide this screen. It's just for separation. The way we actually activate the ability that things are separate like a real app is to add some attributes. Go back to your first section. We're going to add an attribute of data-role. It's okay that it doesn't turn red like other attributes we've seen. Data-role, R-O-L-E. I see people make the mistake all the time that they write R-O-L-L. -L. No, it's R-O-L-E, the role of this, is that it's a page. We need the same thing for the other one. Data role, page. The role of this section is that it will behave like a page, like a screen full of content, and both of them need it. Treat this section as a page, basically. The role of this section is it's a page. Data role. Now if you run it, you should only see the content of first screen. Second screen still exists, and we will be able to get to it with links and such, but it should separate first, con first screen content against second screen content. And this is because jQuery Mobile is in effect. So we can note here to the HTML5 section tag, add the jQuery mobile, I'm just going to put jqm, jQuery mobile, add the jQuery mobile attribute, attribute to set a page, or define a page, a page, a screen full of content. So that's the big secret. That's one of the purposes of jQuery Mobile. We could have done this ourselves with a lot of effort. jQuery Mobile has it all packaged together. You just need to, use, to know the right tag, or more specifically, the right attribute. And of course, later on, we'll go to the official website, jQueryMobile.com, and read more about what we can do. We will see a little bit later that we can create these sort of like widgets, like easy navigation bars, pop-up windows, animation, and all of this great stuff very quickly and easily. Yeah, sure, you could learn how to create it all from scratch, but when you do a sp apps and all of that, do you really want to reinvent the wheel every time? And it's very nice and impressive for you to know the raw code off the top of your head.